Music theory is the language that musicians use to talk to one another about music. It's a tool to help organize your musical thoughts. Understanding music theory will make it easier to write music that sounds good, play music with other musicians, and just understand what makes your favorite music your favorite music. I would like to teach you music theory. You will benefit from an understanding of music theory if you have a soul, enjoy listening to music, or have enough spare time on your hands to be watching YouTube videos. I'm going to start off today with basic stuff, notes and rests. If you already know about notes and rests, you can skip here to my fun examples. Notes and rests are the basic units of music. You can think of a note as being a sound and a rest as a silence. Notes and rests can vary in duration, they can be long or short, and they can also vary in pitch if they're notes. Rests generally don't vary in pitch, they're generally just, you know, not sound. Don't worry about pitch for now. Rhythm offers notes a temporal context. It allows notes to relate to each other by happening simultaneously or in sequence. A chord wouldn't sound like a chord if all the notes happened at different times. If non-musical time is just a simple line from one point in time to another, then musical time is a division of that normal line into repeating lengths. The smallest repeating length is called a beat. You're familiar with the beat as the thing that you feel in music. Uh, how long a beat is is what determines the tempo of the song or how many beats per minute there are. Once you know how long the beat is or what the tempo of the song is, the beats are superdivided into groups that are called measures or bars. Whether you call them measures or bars isn't really important, but technically they should be called measures since a bar is just a line that you draw between two measures. Uh, despite that, however, I'm going to call them bars because it's simpler and snappier and people do call them that in real life. The superdivision of beats into bars gives a basic kind of nuance to the beats where the first beat of every bar is emphasized. This regular division of time into beats and measures is the empty stage onto which rhythm dances. Measures can be further superdivided into phrases, sections, and even movements, but more on that another day. This combination of a division of time into beats and measures is expressed in music theory with a time signature. A time signature tells you how many beats there are in a bar and what to call one beat. The most common time signature, known as 4-4, four, four, or, wouldn't you know it, common time, tells us that there are four beats in a measure, 1, 2, 3, 4, and that one beat is called a quarter note. I've been playing a basic 4-4 four, four division of beats in the background, a la metronome, and you're probably already familiar with the way it feels since most songs are written in 4-4. Four, four. To recap. Rhythm is the time element of music which dances on an empty stage made of a division of time into beats and a grouping of beats into measures, or bars. The number of beats per bar and the name of each beat is expressed in a time signature such as 4-4, four, four, where there are four beats per measure and one beat is called a quarter note. So what the hell is a quarter note? Well, uh, it is a quarter note. It's, uh, it's a certain amount of time. Yeah, answering the question what is a quarter note is really difficult to do since a quarter note is basically just a symbol which represents a certain amount of time, which depends on what time signature you're in and what the tempo of the song is. Really, a quarter note could mean a lot of very different, different things. In order to simplify, I'm going to ignore that there are time signatures other than 4-4 four, four, and just tell you what a quarter note means in that particular context. Uh, which happens to be the context that I'm pretty sure is where we give it its name from. Uh, it's called a quarter note because it takes up one quarter of a measure, or one out of four beats in common time. If you'll remember, there are only four beats in common time, so the quarter note in common time is the beat, which, as it happens, is explained already by the time signature. But let's talk about some other notes as well. Uh, closely related to the quarter note is the half note, which consists of two beats duration, or half of a measure in common time, or twice as long as a quarter note. And closely related to the half note, 
the whole note has a duration of four beats, or one whole measure in common time, or twice as long as a half note. So there is some long notes, some medium long notes, and the basic one beat long note. You can also subdivide the notes into even smaller parts. There are eighth notes, which last half of one beat, or an eighth of a bar, sixteenth notes, which last half of half of one beat, or a sixteenth of a bar, and you can keep dividing the beat into even smaller, smaller, smaller parts, all the way down to the 128th note if you want it, and even smaller, but rarely will you ever go smaller than the 32nd note. At this point, it is worth mentioning beams. Uh, there's the squiggly little lines that are attached to 8th and 16th and 32nd and etc. notes, uh, but they can also be joining several notes together. So if you see uh, two things with a beam joining them together, those are 8th notes. And if there are two beams, then those are 16th notes, just like how many squigglies there are. You can also beam together combinations of different small notes, like you can have an 8th note and two 16th notes. The rule here is that the beam has to have a regular sensical division of time, so you wouldn't want to beam like an eighth note and one sixteenth note together because then you would have a sixteenth rest kind of just hanging out on its own. Speaking of which, there are also rests. Each note has a rest equivalent, and the rests are named similarly to the notes. There are whole rests that last four beats, half rests that last two beats, quarter rests that last one beat, eighth rests that last a beat and a half, and so on, and so on. There are also two more symbols used to change the length of the basic notes and rests. Ties join two notes or rests together, making a hybrid which lasts for both of their durations. Ties are mostly just a notational tool used to keep written music neat and clear. Then there are dots, which increase the duration of a note by half of itself. A dotted note is 150% of the duration of its undotted equivalent. Uh, you can also think of a dotted note as being shorthand for tying one note to the next smallest note value. So, for example, a dotted quarter note is equal to a quarter note and half of a quarter note, which is an eighth note tied together. Or a dotted half note would be a half note plus half of a half note, which is a quarter note, tied together. And so on. I think you get the idea. Uh, dots are really helpful in time signatures where there is a basic triplet-y feel instead of a basic one-two feel, but I'll talk more about that some other day. The best way to memorize which of these funny symbols is which is to practice working with them in music. If you're really serious about learning music theory, I suggest you take music lessons with a private instructor, uh, but otherwise you're just going to have to deal with whatever exercises you can find online, and I'll probably make some in another video. So with just these basic notes, you can make tons of really great rhythms, and especially excellent rhythms if you use more than one instrument. And I will demonstrate.
And that is pretty much all there is to Rhythm, except for uh, all the other time signatures, and the triplets, and the, the duplets. Uh, and I could probably talk about metric modulation, and polyrhythm definitely deserves some discussion. And uh, yeah, like like um, that one part in Bohemian Rhapsody where Freddie Mercury's like...